I told you you're gonna have a test today, right? Woo! Okay. <laughs> the first, <laughs> the first part of your test is essay. I didn't. <laughs> not, not uh, written essay, but uh, verbal <laughs> essay. Did you forget? Okay. It? I forgot. My essay. We're gonna go over some terms, right? <laughs> you studied your Christmas terms, right? Essay. Some of these are real easy. I'm gonna give you an easy one to start off with. What does Emmanuel mean? Oh, look at this. Y'all are so clever. Aren't you clever? Emmanuel, God with us. Or actually, technically, with us, God, if you want to look at it that way, although Hebrew reads backwards. Okay? So it is God with us in the Hebrew. By the way, the EL on the end refers to God. It's that way with a lot of biblical names. Samuel. Daniel, Ezekiel. Those Hebrew names end in E-L as a reference to God. Okay? So uh, if you want to have some fun, go back at Hebrew names and look up their original meanings and that kind of thing, and you'll see uh, you know, what they referred to. If you wonder why sometimes it's spelled with an I, sometimes with an E, it's the difference between Greek and Hebrew. That's all it is. You know, some people prefer to speak Greek. Some people prefer to speak Hebrew. Which one's Hebrew and which one's Greek? Hebrew is the I. Emmanuel is the Greek. Okay? That's what it looks like in Greek. Okay. Okay, so how about hallelujah? What does that mean? Praise the Lord. Or just praise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay? As a matter of fact, you'll see it in uh, in some in some versions. Like if you're reading one of the Psalms that has Hallelujah, in it, you'll see it as Praise the Lord. Oh, you'll see it as Hallelujah in a different version. Uh, there's one version that I I like to uh, read that uh, is kind of a it, it was written for Hebrew Christians, and it says Praise Yah because the Yah in Hallelujah is actually a reference to Yahweh. Shortened, verb of, shortened version of Yahweh. So, praise is Hallel. It is a command, Hallelujah. So, that is a command to praise God. Okay, here's the next one. Messiah. Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. What does Messiah mean? Savior. Favorite one? Promised one. Promised one. Deliverer. Deliverer. God's son? Probably the best definition is anointed one. Okay? Probably. Uh, not to say it's the best, but Mashiach. There it is in the, in the Hebrew Messiah, the anointed one. By the way, Christus is the Greek version. So anytime you see Jesus Christ, Christ is not his last name. Okay? <laughs> It's not like there was Jesus Christ and James Christ and all these other Christs in the family. No, Christus is Messiah. Okay? And Christus comes to us as the word Christ. Messiah, Mash Mashiach, you can hear how both of those words came out of the original language into, uh, into English. Okay, well here's the Sunday school answer you like to give me. Jesus. What does the name Jesus mean? Huh? God's son. God's son? Okay, here we go. In Greek, Jesus. Do you hear Jesus in that? Jesus. Jesus. If you speak Spanish, you definitely hear it. If you speak Spanish, you definitely hear it. Jesus. Jesus. Okay? If you were Hebrew, his name was Yeshua. That's what you hear on like the chosen, you hear the, or even the, the... Okay? His name was Joshua. <coughs> and we go, no, his, his name was Jesus. No, actually, you know, I have a feeling Mary called him Joshua. Or actually, Jehoshua. <laughs> Okay, if you want to be 
proper about it. So, Jehoshua, Joshua, Jehovah's salvation, Jesus means Jesus, uh, uh, Jehovah is salvation. Now do you understand why the angel said you're going to name him Jesus because he will save the people from their sins. That's why you call him Jesus. Okay, here's the one I asked you about last week. Anybody know what it means? The Lord's birthday. Yeah, the Lord's birthday. In Latin, it's birth. In French, it's news. Plus. Something like that. <laughs> it's, it's, I love this up. I love this. It's derived I from the Latin that. phrase Natalis Dies Domini, <laughs> which means the Lord's birthday. You sure about that? No. <laughs> Natalis, I was there. <laughs> it is French. It does come from old French. And in France, during the medieval times and beyond, Noël, Noël, you have to say it like that, no. Noël, meant the Christmas season. Okay? However, somewhere along the line, and I have tried many times, not just this year, I looked again this year and couldn't find it. At some point, it became synonymous with the term carol. Like a Christmas carol, a Christmas Noel, a Christmas song, in other words, but not sure why. But basically, it has to do with the birth and. Okay? It can also mean good news. It can mean good news, exactly. You're right, by the way, the, I didn't say that. But yes. Bon nouvelle. Gloria in excelsis. This is one of my favorites. We sing it all the time. Gloria. Go ahead and wake up next week. Excellent glory of the day. I don't know. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Okay, it does mean glory to God in the highest. However, 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 you need to know this. The Latin, this is a Latin phrase, by the way. This whole thing is a Latin phrase. The Latin phrase, Gloria, does mean glory. Deo means God. Okay, so we've got glory, we've got God. I in, in, by the way, it's pronounced in, not in. In is our word for in. Can you say, so it is in. No, it's in. But it's in. So it's in, in. Now, excelsus is lofty or high. That's the singular form of the word. Excelsis is plural, but it doesn't mean just a bunch of high places. It actually means the highest of the high places. <clears throat> now think about what that actually means in reference to God. God is the supreme. He is the Lord of lords. He is the King of kings. He is the God above all gods. He is the preeminent. He is the only. You understand what I'm saying? And to me, that just makes that phrase a little bit more meaningful. It's not just glory to God who's up there. You know, it's glory to God who is above everything and everybody else who ever was, is, or shall be. Okay? Isn't that fun? Isn't that fun? Okay, Christmas story is found in Matthew 1 and 2 and Luke 1 and 2, right? This is an open book test. All right. These are short answers. Um, I started to do some as true false. I decided not to. I kind of kept them all short answers. Jesus is a Savior. True. And uh, I call this fact checking. You know, there's a lot of fact checking that goes on these days. And a lot of times the fact checking has nothing to do with facts, it has to do with opinions. Okay? But this is these are facts. These are facts. Okay, some of them are easy. Easy questions. You don't want to come to church and fail, do you? Uh, uh, yeah, you did pretty good. You did pretty good on the, the, the words, right? Huh? I came to church because I already failed. On the terms? Here we go. Why did they go to Bethlehem? Count the census. The census. To be counted in the census. What census? The one uh, oh, this is from Caesar. Caesar. Ah. Caesar. 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 Who was the governor at the time? Caesar. Caesar. Pontius Pilate. No. 
No. But a good guess. <laughs> but incorrect. <laughs> you had some love at party yesterday. Quirinius. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. That's a swear to me. Quirinius was governor. Um, and yes, they were to be counted. Sometimes uh, versions of the Bible say taxed. Sometimes, you know, to go for a census, to be counted, whatever. I got news for you. The reason they were being counted was so that they could be taxed. Right? Every 10 years, our government takes a census. And the purpose of the census is said to be for the, you know, redistricting and all that kind of stuff. But let's face the facts. <laughs> It's all about the dollar. Constitution says it's for representation. Yes, it is. And I only answer the question of how many people live in the house. Everything else they can go to the courthouse now. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Okay. Were Mary and Joseph married when they went to Bethlehem? No. No. Yeah, they were. They weren't consummated yet. No, because um, A, remember... He said, uh, uh, he told Mary, the, the angel told Mary, you were going to, you were with child before they were married. So right. No. But this is, a, but they this, were is a, this is later. They were betrothed, which means is the same thing as being married, but it wasn't consummated until after Jesus' birth. Okay. So the marriage was not consummated until after Jesus had been born. Is that what you're saying? Yes. But they were betrothed before that. But they were betrothed before that. Which meant they were married. And let me tell you, the family would not have allowed them to be on their own if this was not a done deal. Are you with me? This was a different time, and no, it ain't happening. And, you know, I tend to believe that most people believe they were married, whether or not they technically were. They'd gone through. Could they have gotten married secretly? Um, probably not, because in Jewish culture, a marriage is a is a big, a big deal. deal. I, it's possible. I've wondered the same thing. Well, I've wondered if I wondered if they got together with the parents and said, yeah. "Hey, you know, we we want this to be above board and everything." Okay, but there's the the answer to the question is we don't know. We know that they were betrothed. We do know that they were betrothed. We do know that that is a binding contract. Okay, life into marriage. Okay? Did Mary ride a donkey to Bethlehem? No. In a cult. Did they refer to the donkey? You've got your books right there in front of you. It's an open book test. And if you find a donkey, tell me about it, because I would love to see it. <coughs> It'll just be a drawing. They didn't have cameras back then. <laughs> <laughs> there is no donkey mentioned. Look all you want. There is no donkey mentioned. And they probably went with the caravan. Yeah. Yes, it's probable. But again, we don't know that. We don't know that. Um, there is no donkey mentioned. Uh, there is a reason why we have that concept. It's because of some early uh, church fathers who wrote things that were not necessarily accurate, but made the story sound pretty good. Uh, Carmel sent me a, a video. I may, I may attach that video so that y'all can see it. Uh, he mentions one of these church fathers that, uh, that said uh, some stuff about the birth that I find kind of interesting. But anyway, no, no donkey. No donkey. Take the donkey out of your nativity scene. <laughs> Throw that donkey away. For crying out loud, there wasn't even a manger. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Did Mary give birth to Jesus immediately upon arriving in Bethlehem? No. It says. <coughs> it says. It was soon after they got there. Look at While the words. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. Or, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And actually, that is a, a slightly more accurate uh, statement. 
okay? The days were accomplished and she should be delivered. In other words, it wasn't immediately. Okay? Yeah, you know, it was, it was reasonably soon, but not immediately. Okay? Look in your Bibles. Tell me the innkeeper's name. Okay, you can stop looking. There is no, there is no innkeeper. There is no innkeeper. Is there an inn? Yes. Yes, there is an inn mentioned. Right? Because there was no room for them in the inn. Did Mary give birth to Jesus in a barn or a stable? Or a cave? Again, the early church fathers put out the put out the word that Mary rode on a donkey and that he was born in a cave. It has no basis in scripture whatsoever. Either of those. But the early church fathers said it. Okay? And the point is it was with animal or whatever it was. The point is it wasn't at the end, I think. I mean, I mean Okay, let's yeah. let's take a look at this. <laughs> Word at the top left is kataluma. Are you familiar with the word kataluma? Yes, thank you. For those of you that have been, <laughs> that's exactly right. Uh, we have discussed this for years. Kataluma is the Greek word. It's only used three times in the New Testament: Luke two seven, Luke twenty two eleven, and Mark fourteen fourteen. Would someone look up twenty two eleven? I got it. And, and Mark 14, 14. I'll take Mark. You got it? Okay, what does Luke 22, 11 say? It says, and they say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Where is the... You didn't say in. You didn't say in. No in. No in? Same word. Kataluma. Guest room. What does Mark 14, 14 say? Say to the owner of the house, he enters. The teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Again, no in? Come on. Guest room. Guest room. Sometimes referred to as the upper room. There is a term that's found right after Luke 22, 11, Luke 22, 12, and right after Mark 14, 14, Mark 14 15, there is another word in Ojeon. And that word, that word actually means a large upper room. Okay? And if you look at those passages, you'll, you'll see that it kind of uh, clears it up. It's referring to the same space. Okay? So, here we go. In Luke, oops, part of it got cut off. Didn't check that. In Luke, there is a word for inn or hotel. Okay? Andokya. That means in or hotel. And uh, you see this in Luke 10, and it's cut off down here, so I can't remember the exact verse, but I'll just tell you what it's about. In Luke 10, we have the account of the Good Samaritan. Do you remember what he did? He picked up that guy, took him to a Andokya an inn or a hotel and said take care of him put it on my account in other words Luke used the word for hotel or inn but he didn't in Luke 2 this is this is <laughs> Bob Billington who is still a member of this class, but anyway, he's the one that first introduced me to it. And we've discussed it, I don't know how many years, five or six years yeah. now? <clears throat> Let me show you a little bit of uh, architecture. It's kind of hard to see, but you can figure it out. In this, the house was here. The guest room would be up there, separated from the house. And there's a good reason. <coughs> there's a reason why you would want your guest 
in a separate room. Do you see how it's kind of, it's got some little steps that go up to it. Wasn't always elevated, but quite often was. Well, I want you to look at this house plan here. Okay? Picture this is the guest room where you walk up to it. This as a family living area that was raised up about this high up off the ground. There were steps that went up to it. You entered down there on the ground floor. When I say ground floor, I mean ground, like dirt. <coughs> okay? Because especially, especially your prized livestock, like that special little lamb that you're gonna save for Passover and you know, all of that kind of, they were actually kept in the lower part. And the family lived in this area. And the guest room, the Kataluma, was back up here. What was going on? Why did Mary and Joseph go there? For the census. For the census. Do you think there were some other people that traveled there for the census? Yes. Do you think it might have been a little bit crowded? Yes. yes. Yeah. Do you think that since Joseph was of the house of David and he was there, do you think he had relatives there? Yes. yes. Okay. Well, <laughs> yes, he probably did. We don't know. I, you know, this is a this. There's a lot of we don't know for sure, but in all probability, yes. Well, how much time was it? Okay. There? So, what? They weren't in Nazareth. They had to travel back to it. He was away because Herod wanted to kill the child. Were, yeah, yeah. They were away. Until Herod died, but it's not specifically yeah, said but, it's in his old age or he just died. Yeah, but when they went to Bethlehem, there were other people there. There were other there were other family there. The most logical thing that I can come up with is that they stayed at the house of a relative. That would have been normal. That would have been the obvious thing. And if the house of a relative was full those relatives would be scurrying around saying, listen, my house filled up, but uh, here's this, here's this, uh, you know, this couple, and, and she's pregnant. We got we to gotta take care of them, okay? And so it is very possible, if, read what it says. I, I you, I'll read, I'll read. No, it said Matthew, sorry. No, I'm in love. Okay, Luke 2. While they were there, this is verse 6, while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the Cataluma. I didn't say Cataluma, it says in my version. At the edge of that raised area, there were depressions. Why? So you could put hay in there hay in there for the, you know, critters to eat, right? So where did she put him? Someplace where he wouldn't roll around. Think about it. Think about it. Okay? In a manger. And by the way, those little depressions are called mangers. A, a, you know, the things that we usually see as mangers, those are mangers also. They're feeding troughs. Okay, I, I, you know, I, they kind of been torn down after the goats and the horse and donkey got a hold of them. But I had mangers, you know, where I put, you know, just dump hay in there, you know, for the critters. But yeah, it's a manger. Now I'm not saying all of that's true. I'm just saying that is a possibility. It is also possible that they went up to a hotel. And Mary was probably ticked saying, you didn't make reservations. <laughs> and said, do you have a room? Nope, the only place I've got is out back. Isn't that the way you've always heard it? The only place I've got is out back. You can go out there and lay down. Have that baby. You know, just move the cows out the way. That reminds me of last just... night. <laughs> okay, let's go on. Do you have any questions about that? I'm sorry, I wouldn't even stop it for questions. No, no, I have a Christmas present for everybody. Yes. Because last night, one of the one of Minnie's uh, puppies had babies at the house, oh which is why Cheyenne didn't get no sleep. And I didn't get no sleep. <laughs> Isn't it funny how they do that? They go to the 
hide, you know, the, 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 no, they go the hideaway. The warmest yeah. place yeah. Uh, uh, by the house. And it's always on the coldest night of the year. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> since we can't find Kendo, yeah. uh, we, we feel that like she already had a last night. And mom went out there this morning and said, well, I hear I hear little baby. Yeah. Good. And I'm going, that's what I heard because we couldn't get that. <laughs> Okay, did the angels sing to the shepherds? Come on, y'all are getting gun shy. Y'all aren't even answering questions no, anymore. They just they, they yes. Yes. Yeah. Never says they sang. Who was the heavenly host? Did it was the heavenly host. host. And by the way, um, <laughs> the version that you read, the heavenly host, that's God's armies. Okay? This is going to be rude. You ever heard soldiers sing? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Josh, John's my bass buddy in choir. It's a joyful noise. It's a joyful noise. <laughs> joyful noise? It's pleasing to the Lord. The word is pleasing to men. The word sing sang is not in there. It says they said. Okay? How many angels spoke to the shepherds? One. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold it. You may have supplanted your husband as teacher's pet if you answered that the way I think you just answered it. Did you say one? I did. <laughs> Only one. Only one spoke directly to the shepherds. The host came along and proclaimed to everybody, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill to men. By the way, that phrase, goodwill, has been translated a hundred different ways. I encourage you to look them up and go find out. Okay, here we go. Got to move on. Got to get to the kings. Were there three kings and did they ride camels? This is a three-part question. We don't know. We don't know. Were there three, <laughs> were there three kings? No, they were not shepherds. Three were they kings? No, they no. were strong. They were strong. They were strong. They were strong. Did they ride camels? No. They had blood. We don't know. Okay. We don't. <laughs> we don't know whether they rode camels. They would have had camels in their procession. We, we don't. Own them or not. <laughs> Why do we say, besides the fact that it's just in the song, we three kings of Orient. Why do we say there's three? Because there were three gifts. Oh, three gifts. Okay, good. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh, right? Does it say there were only three gifts? No. Does it say they limited their gifts to gold, frankincense, and myrrh? Could they have had other gifts? Yes. Why would gold, frankincense, and myrrh have been mentioned? Probably because of the significance that they have to who Jesus is and would be. And is eternally yes. uh, a king, one who would die, one who would be buried. Okay, do you realize myrrh is not something you bring to a baby shower because it's a, it's a herb used to anoint dead people. Yeah. Yeah. Don't take that to a baby shower. I brought you some gold, yay! Well, <laughs> I brought you some incense. Okay, <laughs> and I brought you some myrrh. Ah! No. You don't do that, okay? But they could have brought any number of gifts among them being. So that means there could have been 25 kings. Yeah. Or, or I, somebody yeah. said, no, they weren't kings. Well, kings. Okay. Astronomers, astrologers, whatever. What is a magi? That's the term that's used. It's funny. We don't like to bring this up. and We don't like to discuss it. But actually, the term magi comes from the Greek word magi. And uh, magi were considered astrologers. Often, they were con often they're considered in history to be from the Zoroastrian, it's a different religion, uh, uh, faith. Okay? It's also where we get our word magician. Okay, they were the they were the wise guys. They were the ones who 
who you know did all of the did all of the uh, unbelievable things and and told stories about stuff and and they were the ones who when they started looking into the sky saw this star and decided this is big this is really big okay and being astrologers and being people who study these things they no doubt would have read at some point that this was going to be happening that there was going to be a king okay so they come to town they show up at Herod's footstep and say hey where is he who's working well I don't know but be sure and let me know because I would love to go and worship worship Okay. Is in there, there's one school of thought that said these are the descendants of the wise men when Daniel was in captivity. You know, I have heard, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, there are a lot of people who believe they were Persian and would have been influenced by the Hebrews that were there, Daniel included. Okay, mine, so yes, you're right. The note on mine says it suggests they were Babylonians, and yeah. it goes on to say that they were Gentiles, which anticipates Gentile acceptance in the kingdom. Of there God. you go. There you go. So Magi, they weren't kings. Okay, we don't know if there were three of them, and we don't know if there might have been two. Magi is plural, so it was more than one. Okay, we do know that. Okay? Was Jesus a baby when the Magi visited him? No. Probably not. And the reason that we know that is because Herod killed all the babies two years old, <laughs> two years old and under. And uh, unless, well, Herod was known, oh, this is going to be, this is going to sound bad. He was known for overkill. But, uh, <clears throat> but, yeah, I said it. I said it. It's okay. He was known, I mean, he was a crazy guy. I mean, he family members died because he thought they were, you know, going to usurp the throne and, and just crazy. He had issues, just saying. Yes, he did. <laughs> he did. Okay, um, but yeah, probably closer to about two or three. Who named the boy Jesus? Mary. No, the prophet. Well, when he went to God said. You shall name him Jesus. But somebody actually had to follow through on that. Mary. Wrong. He's a lovely part of gifts on the way out. Well, finally, it was Joseph. We had to do it with hand gestures. No, no, no. That was John's head. Oh, John. Oh, my goodness. He's trying. I'm going to get it eventually. Actually. But what you're talking about, what you're talking about does underscore the fact that the Father is the one who assigned the name. Yes. Okay? The Father is the one who assigned the name. And that's why they went to John, John's dad and said, Hey, come on. And he wrote it out. His name is John. And immediately he was able to speak. i got to tell you. Okay, I'll make it real quick. Again, some of you heard this. That's okay. When Pam was born, Pam's uh, name was Pamela Grace Bennett. Okay? Pamela Grace Bennett. When she was born, her parents had decided she would be Emma, uh, Elizabeth Grace Bennett. Elizabeth Grace Bennett. They had decided on the name. Everything was done. Mama B, Mama Bennett. Mama B was holding little Elizabeth in her arms. Papa standing by the bed, Papa B. Nurse comes in to fill out all the paperwork. Says, what is the child's name? He said, her name is Pamela Grace Bennett. At which point, Mama B went. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Okay. He named her, even though it was not a name that they had even discussed. Okay. Yeah, men used to have some power. Not anymore. It's, like, <laughs> it's, all, it's all over. <laughs> Anyway, yes, uh, by the way, and it says that Joseph was the one who named him Jesus. Okay? Was he born on December 25th? No, no. We don't know. 
probably born in the spring, probably because we shepherds wouldn't have been out in the dead of winter. Uh, if you want to know, I'm not going to get into all the whys and wherefores of why the 25th. Uh, and by the way, that's one that if someone comes up to you and says that they know why it's December 25th, it was because of this pagan festival or that pagan festival or because this Christian entity did this or the Pope did this or whatever. By the way, all of those are conjecture. I got, I got news for you. There is no papal edict that specifically says the closest thing we have is Constantine in 336 saying that December 25th is the day we celebrate. Do you realize they didn't celebrate Christ's birth for the first two or three centuries? That doesn't change the salvation. It wasn't a, it wasn't a, it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. What was a big deal? The big deal was Easter. Mm -hmm. The big deal was Easter. And it should be for us too. The big deal should be Easter. Okay, they didn't even consider that. Now, <laughs> the day he was baptized is believed to be the 6th of January. What we know is Epiphany. Okay? We were talking about this before, before a bunch of you came in. January 6th was known by the Eastern Orthodox and a lot of the Eastern Christian faiths. It was known as Christmas Day. The day of his birth. Then it came along and the Western, the Western culture said, no, it's going to be the 25th. So they had the 25th and January the 6th and they argued back and forth. It's the 6th. It's the 25th. It's the 6th. It's the 25th. So, they came up with a solution to unite the two. Do you know what it is? On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge. The 12 days of Christmas begins on Christmas Day and ends on January the 6th, the epiphany. Okay? I mean, they didn't come up with the song. The song was not the thing that brought them together. By the way, most of the Eastern Orthodox and all, they, they go to December 25th. So, there's a lot of reasons as to why it might be, but bottom line, again, we don't know for sure. There are, there's a, I, I tend to, to, because of some of the, some of the writings of some of the early church fathers, I tend to believe that they, they, they hit upon it sometime around the winter solstice, but for religious, I mean for faith reasons. If you know anything about ancient beliefs concerning the winter solstice, the winter solstice is when things start warming up again. Because the, the days start getting longer. And so it was like his birth. Things are warming up. Things are happening. And that's what I like to. That's what I like to. Look at. Well, the 19th and the 25th aren't that far apart. No, they're not. They're not. And some of them, even back then, celebrated winter solstice, you know, mm -hmm. uh, closer to the 25th. So, anyway. And Bob, you ever seen that guy that did the, the computer model with the stars? Yeah. Did you, did you, have you read, uh, no. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say Lee Strobel, but it wasn't him, but it was this lawyer guy or something that took that software to go back and, like, try to just pinpoint more accurately. Right. And it's very interesting. It's actually, I mean, you know, according to him, again, it's conjecture. Right. But, he, but they were talking about astronomy and how, you know, it says they use the stars to find out and all this kind of stuff. Very interesting. He went back and showed all these different planets and stars and all this that lined up yeah. in, a, in a certain period. And if you haven't watched it, there's a good video on it on, oh, cool. on YouTube. Um, you can search it. But yeah. it's actually, I mean, considered pretty accurate, you know, yeah. in that sense. Because, What's it called? Uh, I can't remember. I'll find Star it. Star that's, 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 that's it. That's it. It's, and it's when they line up. And it's when these certain things line up, and it was called, you know, the, the Jupiter was the large planet. All these oh, I think you said that to me one time. I remember. Really time yeah. and, it, and it made the brightest star and where it would have been. And I mean, it actually fits it along yeah, the, yeah, the, the line. The, the, the candy bar on the swimming pool, though, is this. <laughs> Maybe a room. <laughs> Why would you put a candy Yes. Too? Is that Peter Stoner? There's a reason. Um, is that Peter Stoner? Stoner? The time period. Our, our, our concept of dates and times, we have A.D., B.C., but that was decided 800 years after right. the birth of right. Christ. So, 
if you're looking, because they do use astronomy when they find these little uh, astrological uh, structures on the ground. They, that's how they right. tell how old well they suppose they are. But we're, we're basing that off of somebody that came up. And I'm not saying, what, what I'm saying here is we're not going to be able to take it's exactly 800 years to the day, or, or, or in our case, it'd be 2,021 years to the day of Jesus' birth. Well, and we actually can, especially when it's compared with a lunar cycle, you can kind of triangulate things. But no, we can't. We can't know, and we don't know. The other thing. The other thing is the 25th. I just lost my train of thought. What was I going to say? The 25th. Oh, no, no, not the 25th. The actual year of his birth is also up for grabs. It was probably around 4 to 5 BC. Makes sense. You might be thinking about that when you say the, the problem. Okay. With this, the problem with all the stars lining up in a certain order is us trying to, to fit the things to our... The way we see it, and the way we see it. it. And it's a supernatural... Yeah. event in the Bible because it says the star went before them and it stood it stopped. still. <clears throat> yes. Right. So it's a supernatural event. Yes. Yes. And guys, aren't you glad these astrologers were paying attention? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, really. We, we tend to you know, put down people who you know, do all this. But I'm glad they were paying attention at that point. Well, it kind of makes a good point like saying it was a supernatural event. Oh, it is. Because it's like, oh, there are stars. Astrologers like, oh, stars. I see stars all the time. But what yeah. makes them get out of their house and go towards it? Right. We have to follow that. That one, one, that one. Goes down and Okay. <laughs> so it's time to go shout out some important facts about the birth of Jesus. It happened. It happened. He was born. Fulfillment of prophecy. Fulfillment of prophecy. Virgin birth. Virgin birth. He's God's son. Reconciliation. Reconciliation. Amen. I'm going to give you one and then I'm going to pray. He was born to die. Yeah. He was born with one purpose. And that was to die for the sins of the world. And to be resurrected. To offer us hope and life. Father, we thank you that whenever we celebrate it, December 25th, January 6th, April the 1st, it doesn't matter, Father, we thank you that in the fullness of time, Jesus was sent into this world to be born of a virgin, to be born in humble circumstances, to grow as a man into the Savior of the world. We thank you for his life, his perfect, sinless life. We thank you for his teachings. But most of all, Father, we thank you that he was obedient to death, even the death on the cross. And Father, we shout, Hallelujah, when we consider the resurrection. Help us, Father, to remember all of this during this time of the year. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.